Okay, this video actually is a slideshow on your Google Drive and it's entitled Rome Images. Each one of these little slides has some information about it that I'm going to go over with you right now. Hopefully for the homework assignment you'll be doing next week on Monday, you'll look through the slideshow and then you'll make two or three observations you see off of all the slides. I'm going to go over what each one of the slides are a little bit there. Now by this observation I expect you to do next week, it'll be on Cabinet on Monday of course, but I expect you to, you know, mix a couple observations, two or three of them, and then email me what your observations are. Do you see an overarching theme? What strikes you about the imagery? Or something like that. This, of course, is the Roman Imperial Eagle, which is one of their standards that they have on their poles that they carry around with the army. And the Imperial Eagle, actually back in the day, was oftentimes made out of solid gold. This, of course, is an embossed area, which is a carving of what the Roman legionaries would have looked like. And yes, you're going to see my thumb pop up every now and then as I swipe across my own little iPad. Can't use the TV downstairs because my wife is in the room working, so I've got a little, little bit of flexibility up here. Now, you notice the Roman soldiers themselves, they are not large. The average height of Roman soldier is like 5'2 to 5'5. Five five. They're actually pretty small guys. Um, people in the ancient world tended to be pretty small in general compared to the heights of people today. A lot of it was poor nutrition, evolution, and things like that. This is a scorpion. Think of it as like a crossbow on steroids. Some people back then actually called them catapults. You could launch a large arrow out of it, and then you could shish kebab people, all right? Or you could actually launch stone balls out of it. Think about big stone cannonballs come flying towards you. The Romans actually approached the military in a very scientific way and had their own artillery corps as well. This is a coin. Roman coins are still being turned up across fields in the former Roman Empire. Majority of their coins were bronze. That's why you can see this one has a little bit of greenish on the outside edge of it. Um, their coins are much like ours. They had the heads of their leaders or commemorating certain things. Um, this one you can see where it says Caesar along the outside edge of it and you can see the face in the center of it. They also had gold and silver coins as well. Yes, these guys on the weekends like to dress like Romans and they like to hold their shields and stand there like they're going to battle. Well, I guess there's better ways and worse ways to spend your weekend, but this gives you kind of a vivid, full-color look of what a very small formation called a tetsudo would be. And that tetsudo means tortoise. This is ancient Rome in the modern world. Okay, This is the ruins of what's left over from the ancient Romans. If you go to Italy today, much of the things that were still there are, have, were built by the Romans years ago. Another little bit of artwork where you can see the chariot. Many of these items are all across Italy in different parts of the world as well. Another coin, you can see the edges aren't quite as cut as neat, but you can see a clear imprint of the head of the leader they have there with a crown of some sort on them. An artistic rendition of a gladiator. Gladiatorial combat was huge for the Romans. They used it for a variety of reasons. Not only to get rid of political prisoners, to get rid of criminals, to persecute different religious groups, all different sorts of things, as well as entertaining people. Remember, there's no Monday Night Football, okay? There's no basketball, but you could, of course, have the gladiatorial combat in the arenas, and it would draw huge crowds. It was an arena, and you could have a dome pulled across the top of it made out of sailcloth to shade it. They had vendors selling food and drinks. There's all sorts of different things, and it was very similar to the modern arenas that we have today. And this is an onager. An onager is a type of catapult, and it would hurl large balls of stone, rocks, or flaming balls of pitch in order to attack somebody else. Necklaces, artwork, things like this were done clearly and very well by artisans in ancient Rome. And you can see the denting on the top of the jewelry here. The denting is because it's nearly pure gold, so it's so soft you can literally crush it with your fingers. But this is all done by hand without any machine work. Ah yes, notice how his helmet has a crest that is called transverse. It goes sideways so he stands out in a battlefield. The leaders would have a helmet with a transverse crest so they could be followed in battle and the soldiers would line up behind them. The standard, all right, of the Legion 6th Legion, there behind him, standing up as well. Another little image of several guys standing together, dressed up like the Romans. Different coins together in one pile. You can see them all having different embosses on the top to give the image of either people or gods, goddesses, mythological figures, but mostly leaders. On the back of this one, there's a silver coin, and you can see a ship 
it's going to kind of worn off over the hundreds of hundreds of years, but it's there clearly. Yes, when you're important, you get a big statue of your head, and it stays around. That's called a bust, okay? Artwork, and you can see this guy would be a centurion. He's wearing the skin of a wolf on top of his head because the founding myth about the foundations of Romulus and Remus and being found by a wolf. And if you look in the background there, you can see these guys that are kind of shirtless, all covered in blue tattoos, and they're riding on a chariot. Those are the Celts that the Romans encountered in England. More earrings, very detailed, highly coveted and sought after because of the gold content. This is what it would have looked like in ancient Rome when you were there if it was all restored. Lots of stone, lots of organization, very clean, very neat um, in some areas. Other areas of that massive city are, would be filthy, like any den of humanity where you get a lot of people in one area. I'm sure you could smell Rome before you even saw it. A townhouse. You can see there's a little pool there, there's a bench, some artwork on the walls in there. They have a lot of different things kind of going on where you can see what the house would have looked like. More artwork commemorated in chariot race. The... Romans loved chariot races. Very, very brutal, very dangerous. Death occurred in almost every race. Um, they actually had chariot gangs called the Reds and the Blues. I do recommend watching Ben-Hur, the old edition um, movie that was made with Charlton Heston, where they actually did chariot racing for real. It's an interesting thing if you search it on YouTube, look up Ben-Hur chariot scene. It'd be a good thing to look at. Okay, gladiators. This one is a mosaic style artwork where they have lots of little stones making an image. This is a gladius. The gladius itself is the main sword of the Roman army. Okay, It's a fairly short weapon. It's around three feet or so, usually double-edged with a solid point. Just hanging around on the weekend, talking to friends, wearing a tunic. Ah, yes. You see on this particular helmet here, there's a crest across the top of it, and there's a little brim at the top and little cheek pieces. Each one of those is designed to catch a blade or deflect a blade so it doesn't actually crash into the person's face. The inside of a home, you can see where the tile on the ground has imagery and work. There's pictures on the walls, very colorful. Rome was not a dull or drab area. The townhomes and the houses for the wealthy looked quite similar in many ways to what we see today. A hoplomachus type gladiator, large shield, a sword, heavy helmet, all right, but wearing a loincloth, aka mandiver. A little bit blurry picture of the Colosseum itself, what's remaining of the Colosseum. A stylized artwork saying, this gladiator, should they live or should they die? Different kind of gladius that you would see, some fancier than others. The remaining area in Rome, where it had some of the original Roman government buildings. More artwork, you can see, those would be Roman soldiers. Now their hands are kind of up on the right hand side, because at one point it would have been holding, in between each hand there, a stylized spear or javelin. Another gladius. A coin. This is Lorica Segmentata, okay, it's kind of what they have for the Roman armor. This one, however, is made out of leather. Real Lorica would be made out of metal, probably steel. This is real Lorica. Um, it's like shoulder pads for playing football, and you would wear it, it would clamp on top, lay over the shoulders, and settle down on top of you. It provides pretty good mobility and pretty good protection. You can see some rust in the back of that picture there, and you can see the leather straps that are holding it all together. This unfortunate person was a victim of Mount Vesuvius. When the volcano erupted and the ash and the dirt and the mud came down, it covered many people. Um, many of them were lucky enough to have died when the poison gas came out. Odorless and tasteless, they died in their sleep. Other people were covered by the hot exhaust of the mud and things like that coming out of the volcano. And it hardened over them, and there's actually a body inside of that. This is one of the items that decorated Nero's golden palace. We'll talk about Nero decided to build a new palace, and it has so much gold in it, it bankrupted the entire empire. Um, that's why they called it the Golden Palace. A Romillo style gladiator. Another coin. You can tell. Look at the chin on that guy. Wow. A nice clear picture of a bunch of fellows dressing up on the weekend to pretend they're Romans. 
And this is a poor picture of a javelin called a pilum that the Romans used. What made it unique was the front of it, when it hit a shield, would then bend so it could not be thrown back at the enemy. That is a person throwing a javelin, known as a pilum. A nice stylized version of a helmet. A couple of coins. These are very, very clearly detailed. Right? Very well preserved. You can see the detail in them matches every bit as much as what we had in ours. The coins back then were indeed stamped out. Okay, They were pressed and stamped in a kind of a primitive machine. A Retaria style gladiator fought with a trident and a net. Just hanging on the weekend, wearing the Roman armor, thinking he's cool. Good clear picture of the Colosseum as it is right now. You can visit it. I'm sure many of you had. Colosseum was an amazing feat of engineering. Full circular at one point, hidden doors, elevators in the bottom. You could flood the Colosseum and have naval battles on the inside of it. The Romans would capture and bring animals from all around the world so they could put them into their blood sports in the Colosseum. You have the Roman Pantheon, which is sort of like the Parthenon, but this is a temple for all of the Roman gods. This is an ancient Roman sword, sword uh, more like a dagger called a Pugio. A standard SPQR, more swords, more coinage, even more coinage, and armor on a stand. Yes, for most times you have your armor resting on a tree like that so they can lift it off and then put it on because it's not exactly the lightest stuff in the world. Aqueducts, which are still in use today, carried water to the city of Rome. A nice view of Vatican City, which is in the center of Rome. A Samnite style gladiator. A secutor style gladiator. And this is called a spatha. This is the Roman cavalry sword, so you could reach down from the horse to strike somebody when you're on horseback. Fun fact. Romans had no stirrups. Imagine riding a horse, bareback, with a tunic, with no stirrups. Yikes! Okay, Roman artwork, very similar to Greek. Another person, this one, a woman, victim of Vesuvius, she actually is covering her child and is covered up with the volcanic ash and dirt in her place of death. A shield with their swords. A Thracian-style gladiator. Notice the curved blade that they would wield. It was designed to hook behind elbows and joints and kind of rip the tendons up in there. A selection of various weapons. Another type of long dagger. And this actually is a wolf statue. It's a reproduction of what was originally made in bronze, showing Romulus and Remus nursing from the wolf that rescued them, hence the mythology of the foundation of Rome. 